Hey everyone, Micah here with ebikeschool.com. I've got something a little different for you today. This is a giant portable backup battery. Portable is kind of relative because this box weighs like 50 something pounds, but uh, we're gonna check out what exactly we have here because it's the biggest portable backup battery I've ever tested. Now I got this thing from a uh, big blue battery. It's called the Cell Power 2500. And full disclosure, they did send me this for free to test, but like you guys know, I can't be bought. So if this thing is awesome, I will tell you, but if it sucks, I'll tell you that too. Now 2500 doesn't mean the capacity, unfortunately. It's actually 1800 watt hours. 2500 would be awesome, but uh, 2500 is actually the wattage. So it'll do 2500 watts continuous or 5,000 watts peak of AC power. All right, let's flip this thing forward because we've got another box inside this one. There we go, that's what I'm talking about. So as you can see, this thing already has some crazy specs. Like I said, it's got 1800 watt hours. This is lithium iron phosphate, by the way, so it's supposed to last like 3000 cycles. So let's get this thing open and, and check it out. All right, first thing, accessories. Got all sorts of power cords in here. AC cord, DC for 12 volt. Got solar panel connectors here. The whole kit and caboodle. All right, this thing is massively heavy. Let me hop up here and try and pull it out. It's already a bit of a downside as this thing is like 55 pounds. There we go. Oh man, this thing is heavy. All right, 55 pounds. Here is the Cell Power 2500. Let's try turning it on. There we go, turning on. So it's at 80%, that was the storage charge. Let's see what kind of ports we got here. Oh. <laughs> All right, we got six AC ports over here, plus the fans. That's more than more any than other any power other bank power I have bank ever I've seen. Ever the biggest seen one I've seen is three AC ports. That's my uh, Jackery 1500, I think. And that one, I fill up all three a lot. So six ports is pretty awesome. Let's see what we got on the other side here. All right, so we've got our 12 volt out with our cigarette lighter plug. Does anyone still call these cigarette lighter plugs? Then we've got two USB-A fast charge ports. We've got four USB-C. Wow, <laughs> seems like a little bit of overkill, four USB-C, but man, you can run a lot of things off of that. Then we've got a couple of 12 volt DC ports. And then what are these? Uh, and then here we've got our DC inputs. We've got three 12 volt DC inputs. So you could run a bunch of solar panels into this box because you've got three different inputs there. Is there anything on back? Nothing on back. This big blue cell power 2500. All right, let's check out the manual here. What, there's apparently a microphone in this. What do you need a microphone for? There's a, oh, there's a microphone and speaker in here apparently. I have no idea why there's a mic. Am I reading this wrong? Microphone, speaker? Oh, there's an intercom for help. When you're unable to make a call in an emergency, click the setting bar to find the walkie-talkie icon. Click to enter the call for help function interface. After turning on the function, this built-in radio in the system will scan for civil radio frequency band near the device. If you receive a response from the corresponding frequency band and need to talk to it, you can press and hold the call key to automatically lock the frequency band before switching, and then speak to the microphone on the side. Wow, this has what, like a, a little ham radio in it? That is awesome. All right, so there's app control as well, but right now the Android app is the only one working. They don't have the uh, iPhone app working yet, so I can't test the app out. All right, well now what I wanna do is test this thing out. I don't know if I have 2,500 watts worth of stuff to plug into it, but let me go grab some electric bikes and other things, and let's see what we can can run off of this battery. All right, Suron. Cyberquad. DIY electric bike from a video I haven't even posted yet. I'm messing up the whole chronology of my channel, but it doesn't matter, I gotta find things to plug in. It's Suron, you're first, buddy. First come, first serve. Let's plug in the bike. All right, and we're charging, and we're pulling 670 watts or so. It tells me I got two hours until this thing is drained. 670 watts, not bad. Let's keep charging. Now for the DIY e-bike. All right, got our red light. And we're up to 776 watts. I have to back this guy around. Now we're up to 855 watts. Uh, what else? 
Ah, the truck. Let's just plug the truck in. Forgot it was electric for a second. Right. Truck charger. Hopefully it'll reach here. The truck is charging now. Man, can you guys hear those cooling fans? Those are running. Hey, we're at 1649 watts. We're getting there. Now, I will say this screen is not easy to read in the sunlight. So as cool as I already think this thing is, I would have liked to have seen a brighter screen. Probably inside it's bright enough, but out here it's a little hard to read. And I'm starting to run out of things to plug in here. Here's a drill battery charger. All right, 1658. That didn't add a whole lot of watts. I need something else. I'll be back. All right, I found something else. My uh, Bofeng radio, which I guess I don't even need anymore because this thing is apparently a walkie-talkie. But what the heck, let's plug that in as well. 1665. All right, I don't know what else to plug into this thing to get to uh, 2,500 watts. I think that's going to have to do it in terms of anything else I can plug in right now. I've maxed out the six outlets and I haven't even reached its peak power. So I guess if I plugged in like a fridge or something, you know, you could run big things like that. And then uh, on the other side, there's all those other ports. So I could plug in my laptop. Um, I plug in my cameras, but you guys are using them right now. Now I'll also say here, as I'm listing both the pros and the cons, that the cooling fans are all on now and it is very loud. This thing sounds like a freight train coming. So I guess when you're running it at high power like this, it really has to cool itself down. Makes sense. So don't expect that this is gonna be a super quiet device if you're using it at the higher end of its power range. So we've dropped from 80 to 68% now. Uh, which kind of makes sense because I'm running a bunch of devices here, including powering this entire truck. This truck, by the way, has a 6,000 watt hour battery, so I wouldn't be able to charge the whole thing from that. You know, this is 1,800 watt hours, so the battery in here is over three times the size. But theoretically, you could use this to give the truck about a third more range, which is kind of a neat idea. Now, I didn't get the solar panels with this. They have their own um, big blue battery solar panels that uh, are compatible with this, though I'm sure you could plug in any solar panels you want. It even comes with the cord to plug in your own solar panels. But um, you could add up to six of their, I think they're 100 watt or 120 watt solar panels. So you could put in some serious power. I think it's up to like 1200 watts of uh, solar power input that you can do. Now one thing I kind of want to figure out is how to use that uh, walkie-talkie feature. So let's click the setting bar to find the intercom. All right, I'm not finding the intercom or walkie-talkie icon here. In a minute, I'll bring it inside so you guys can see the screen a little better. I know it's hard in the, the bright sunlight out here, and uh, maybe we'll find it together. All right, so I think I've made my point there. Let's pull in 16, 1700 watts almost just fine. So let's unplug these things and take a look at the unit itself. Man, as I unplug these, you can already hear the cooling fans quieting down. So I guess, you know, in real time, it's determining how much cooling it needs based on the immediate power draw. In just a few minutes, I can already see the charge has gone up on all these things. That's awesome. Yeah, I could definitely see being in the field and bringing this out to power your devices throughout the day. I mean, that's a, a serious battery there. The only problem is, geez, this thing is heavy. I mean, you can move it around, but like 55 pounds, see 25 kilos, that's yeah, 50, 55 pounds. Yeah, this thing is... Uh, is not light so you know you can walk around with it it's like a um you know a, a real heavy uh, ice chest or something with a a lot of drinks or ice in it but you're not gonna want to be carrying this thing like on a hike or something it's just too heavy for that so as like a semi-portable solution you know that's what i'd call it it's like semi-portable you can carry it around but you're not going to want to do it for too long speaking of which now i want to bring it inside so we can take a look at that screen a little better and i think i'm going to drive it back because I ain't carrying that sucker all the way back to the house. All right, I'll, I'll come back for those things. All right, now we're inside. Pardon the mess, it's the garage, but it's a lot easier to see the screen on this thing. So let's take a quick peek at it. All right, so you can see we're at 62% now after running all those devices. We had started at uh, 80, I think. Cool thing is it gives you a readout of how long until it's empty. I guess it's using just a little bit of power now to run the fans and the screen and whatnot. So theoretically, this thing could run like this for 33-something hours. Now that I turn the AC off, let's see what happens. So now we're up to 43, 50, 58. All right, so it could basically run forever, I guess. Yeah, now it's uh, not really using any power because it's turned off the AC inverter. All right, now what I really care about is finding that uh, 
intercom. Wait, is there GPS? Whoa, look at that. It gives you GPS coordinates. All right, I'm gonna have to blur this, but that's pretty cool. It gives you actual exact latitude and longitude. All right, so the screen gives us all of our instantaneous input and then, yeah, output. So right now there's nothing plugged into it, but this will tell us all of our electrical specs, what we're running. Let's see, battery info, state of charge, and what you got left, voltage, etc., temperature. Whoa, it tells you the voltage of every cell as well. That's interesting. It's actually pretty neat so you can see if it's unbalanced. It looks like everything is at 3.29 volts, so everything's perfectly balanced right now. That's a cool feature. So what's the warning? I guess if there's an issue, it'll tell you. Settings. So this is where the intercom is supposed to be. Let's see, network setting. I don't think that's it. Time frequency. Oh, that appears to be the electrical frequency. Product settings, sound switch, yeah, let's turn that off. Screen off time, one minute, that's fine. Language, don't want to change that. Touch correction. Gonna... Oh, you can like calibrate the, all right, I got it. Product information. All right, so I don't see how to turn on the intercom or radio unless I missed it. Might have to hang on to that Baofeng after all. All right, so there we have it. That's the Cell Power 2500. I think that it's actually a pretty awesome device. And so I mentioned it launched today. Uh, they are taking pre-orders for this thing. And apparently the first 300 people get it at a super discount price, just 999 bucks, which is crazy for the amount of capacity in this thing. 1800 watt hours for a thousand bucks, that's like unheard of in the power station world. So a pretty awesome deal. Uh, I like the device, it's you know really heavy and it's quite loud when you've got it on high power, but other than that, oh, and the screen is a little hard to read in the sun. You know, I could do it, but especially on camera, it, it didn't pick up very well. So um, not the best screen and super heavy, but that's what you get with a big battery. Other than that, I mean, I think it was pretty awesome. Ran tons of devices. I had like six things plugged into it at once, uh, just on the AC side, let alone all those DC ports, the um, four USB-C PD ports, all the other USBs, the 12 volt ports. There's a lot to this thing. So I'd say good job, big blue battery. Uh, you get two thumbs up from me. All right, last but not least, it is time to announce the winner of the giveaway for my last video. And the randomly selected winner is... Very anonymous. Congratulations. Just let me know which one of my books you'd like. You can choose from DIY Lithium Batteries, DIY Solar Power, The Ultimate Do-It-Yourself E-Bike Guide, or my newest book, The Electric Bike Manifesto. Anybody else who wants a chance to win one of my books for free, just put a comment down below and hopefully you'll be the randomly selected commenter at the end of my next video. And if you don't want to wait that long, you can always find my books on Amazon. All right, thanks for watching everybody. See you next time.